Sometimes, seeing stonework in the snow can stir your curiosity, while also leaving that curiosity unsatisfied. I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma. On a recent winter's day, I ventured into Arms Forest near the Burlington, Vermont waterfront and found some curious stone features. I'll be going back after the snow melts. There was definitely more to see buried beneath the snow. A trailhead is up behind Burlington High School, just up and across the North End Plateau from the Donahue Sea Caves. Back before the high school was built in the 1960s, this was part of the Arms Dairy Farm. They drove their cows down to Intervale Pastures on the old road. That's now the path down through Arthur Park to Long Pond in the Sea Caves. There's an old quarry down here, a small one. Burlington was better known for processing stone than as a source for it, but this stone was deemed high enough quality to be polished into marble, and the quarry was used for a short time. There's a lot of info about the quarry and the old dairy farm at enjoyburlington.com. Right now, we're above the quarry. The quarry is a bit more impressive from the side.
I also recall reading somewhere that this quarry was the source for the blocks they used to build Ethan Allen Tower in Ethan Allen Park up the road, but I haven't confirmed that. My hike through the snow brought me to this possible wingstone feature. As it was my first time through, and strongly urged, I was staying on well-trodden paths. So I was happy to find a side path leading up here, so I could get a better look. This wingstone is near the edge of a stone and earth cistern on the hilltop, possibly a pond from the farm years. There are other wing-like stones nearby, as we'll see.
Trying to get in close here to show you just how curious the surfaces were. The wing seems to have three or four sections. The deep fissures could be created by frost wedging, breaking apart the dolo stone. Perhaps the stone's structural integrity was undermined by shaping, sculpting, and working long ago. There seems to be deliberate marking and shaping of this stone. It struck me that these channels in the wing could also have been here all along, deliberately meant to channel water from a source on the hill above as part of the wing's design. Could geology explain this away? Probably. Even likely. But should it?
The biggest challenge here, trying to get a good view of this stone while maintaining solid footing on a snow and ice covered bluff top path. This wing also has a small side stone. I've been noticing perched side stones next to some of what I believe are features. I'll show you one next to a possible direction stone, and one beside a prominent boulder, in just a moment. This side wing stone is placed at the juncture of the middle and front sections of the wing. As I often do, I studied the trail map a bit before visiting, but wandered without it while I was there, allowing intuition to guide which of the many interconnecting footpaths in the snow to take. I was drawn up this hill and rewarded with the sight of a huge boulder. There's a lot about this almost circular space that says it's a possible ceremonial stone landscape. I want to see what this looks like once the snow melts. Council Rock. The words echoed in my head. I have no proof that is what it is, but I couldn't shake that sense of it once it hit me. There seem to be lines of stone radiating out from the boulder, but it's hard to say that for sure in the snow. Here's that perched side stone I mentioned before. The space between it and the boulder is filled with smaller stones. There's what seems to be a partial, natural, circular stone wall on the north side of the boulder. The remnants of a crude wooden shelter Span the space between the wall and the western rise. This is a beautiful space. The western rise seems to have lines of wing-like boulders laid out across it, up and behind the boulder.
Lake Champlain is only a short distance away. The Adirondacks on the horizon, beyond the water. The snow certainly seems to be keeping some secrets. It will be most interesting to return and investigate this site without snow. I almost missed this perched assemblage on a side trail near the trailhead. This set of stones is also somewhat wing-like and in three or four sections a similar design to the other wing stone, including gaps in the back. As this is nearly the opposite side of the stone and earth cistern at the same height, they could have been components of an ancient water control system. Let's get in close and check out the surface details. Is this another side stone? When we look below the stones, we can see how they were perched in place, shaped to rest on the bedrock. Granted, some of this is the work of erosion, the exfoliation of the rock over time, frost wedging, and other natural geological processes. But all of this? I don't think so. In this front section, the rear of the two stones seems to have a sort of starburst on its surface, though it's hard to tell for certain with all the moss.
Besides the starburst, this whole stone looks deliberately shaped. The moss does make it hard to tell. But look at this. I'm sure people walk and mountain bike past this all the time. I wonder how many stop to really look at it. Check out the surface detail. Again, when we look beneath the stones, we can see they are rather precisely set on top of the Dolo stone bedrock. There even appears to be a row of small stones on the left, like a lower jaw or teeth. When we come in close here, you can really see how the stones and the bedrock are shaped to fit together. Look at the curve carved into the top stone on the right, so it can sit and fit. Another set of curious stones in the snow. As for other wing-like features, this possible direction stone was set prominently next to the trail near the quarry. Very avian. Some that I showed it to thought it looked like a bird effigy stone. It's at least a sort of pointing wing. It seems to be pointing up towards the northwest or down towards the southeast.
It certainly looks like this was deliberately carved. Again, the question might arise, could geology do this? Maybe. But this shows purpose and design. Just water and erosion? A room full of monkeys might be able to type out Shakespeare, but that doesn't make them the most logical origin for the source of the place. At what point do we begin to dismiss some of the assumptions of earlier, culturally biased academics and begin to credit this kind of work to more than geological processes? Elsewhere in the world, this sort of stonework is not immediately dismissed as geological. The circular logic which says this isn't cultural, because these cultures here didn't produce such things ignores reality and smacks of racism. I mean, really, look at this. I'm not sure this stone is where it's always been. There's a suspicious hole drilled in it near the bottom. Or maybe they used it to hold a flag since it was here. Near the base, along this front edge, you can see where what I'm calling carving has itself been eroded, smoothed away. The less exposed surface next to it still shows detail.
Back on the top of the stone, this ridge appears to be extensively worked. I'm still wondering if this used to be a side, this surface now facing up, if the stone was moved. Next to the direction stone is a small side stone, or just a part of the larger stone that somehow chipped off. I tried to determine which direction the stone might be pointing in. The stone is perched at an angle. If it's pointing in the direction going up, it's northwest. If it's going down, southeast. This is using the Sunseeker app. I ended up circling around by the quarry again as I made my way back out of the forest. The sunlight was playing beautifully across the stones, so I shot some more video. This preliminary visit to Arms Forest stirred my curiosity and my imagination. I'll be coming back here once the snow melts to see and learn more. There's nothing like these first visits to a place. My experiencing presentations tried to share the freshness of these initial adventures. Also look for my Ancient Stone Mysteries of New England presentations which share their name with my Facebook group. In those, I compile more in-depth research, investigations, and additional material. You'll find episodes on my YouTube channel. It's amazing to me the hidden history that seems to be spread out all around us if we only stop and take the time to open our eyes and look. I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma. Thank you for experiencing these curious stone features in Arms Forest in Burlington, Vermont with me. <laughs>